Well, yeah, how many years has it been since there were red heifers in Israel? I mean, this is... Probably more than 2,000. More than 2,000 years since the destruction of the temple. Right. The, the Rambam said, the Maimonides says that there were nine red heifers in our history, and maybe this will be the tenth one. The current state of the red heifers and their timeline for their sacrifice kind of seems to have stalled out, but there actually is a few updates I want to cover in this video. The Israel Guys and Shalom in Messiah Ministries posted a video where they got access to the red heifers and those who are keeping them, and there's a lot of insights to glean from these conversations. The red heifers are currently at a facility in Shiloh. Shiloh has a long history in relation to Israel. It's one of the main centers for Israelite worship before the first temple in Jerusalem was built. Shiloh was the religious and military capital of Israel during the times of the judges, and the tabernacle resided here for 369 years. The facility where the red heifers are held is going to be a tourist attraction. People are actually going to be able to go there, learn about the red heifers, and visit them in person. Millions expecting to see red heifer at ancient Shiloh heritage site. And they called the farmer and they said, hello, uh, we're talking from Jerusalem. Maybe you could help us. Probably sounds weird, but we're looking for red heifers. So the farmer said, it's not weird for me. I'm a Christian. I know all, all about the red heifers. I know the Bible. And not only that, when I decided to raise cattle 30 years ago, I chose the red Angus because I thought maybe one day my cows will serve in the temple. People often talk about how America is not mentioned in Bible prophecy. But I do find it interesting that the red heifers were raised by a guy whose intention was for them to be used in a red heifer ceremony and that this huge prophetic event that will take place in Israel has cows that came from America. I should say that the red heifers, like I said, are key for the temple. And the temple is the house of prayer and love for all nations and will bring blessings to all the world. And I invite everybody to take part of it and it will just uh, it's, it's a good thing it's nothing harmful it's not nothing violent this house of peace or a state of peace is something that's mentioned in these interviews time and time again this fits in exactly with what the bible prophesies is going to take place they even mentioned multiple times about the bible and how this fits in with different things in the bible even though the jewish people don't believe much of the bible or any of the new testament what we're seeing is the beginning stages of a uniting of everybody under one system, and that is prophesied to happen as well. So if one is ready to be sacrificed, can they sacrifice and then keep the ashes until they're ready for the build? Yes, you, you, you can do it, but uh, they're not going to do it right away yeah. because they want to. It's, it's a very significant thing that has to be agreed. Right. The temple is called a house of prayer for all nations. Yeah. It's a house of peace and house of prayer. So nobody's uh, going to do it in a like violent way. So it yeah. has to be agreed, first of all, among the rabbis to agree that this specific cows, it's, they're all like qualified from all the different aspects. And then among the Israelis to, to know it's not only a little group of people that are doing this, but it's something that's agreed among, um, among the people and also around the world. They want to make it as, as agreed as possible to make it to make the process really uh, succeed. And that's part of the issue over here of having a visitor center is not only to have the red heifers here, is also to make the hearts ready. This plan and desire for a state of peace to come to Israel and the Middle East before the red heifers are sacrificed is something that's prophesied in the book of Daniel written 2,600 years ago. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. The abomination of desolation mentioned in that passage takes place in the third temple that the ashes of these red heifers will purify, and it seems that they're waiting first for that state of peace before they do this ritual ceremony. Something mentioned right there in that prophecy in the book of Daniel. This woman who is a keeper of these red heifers confirms that the red heifer ceremony 
doesn't need to take place in the third temple, which some people seem to be confused about, and also that it doesn't have to take place on the Temple Mount. The ceremony will take place actually on the opposite mountain, looking at the temple location on the Mount of Olives. From what I understand, they have to, if they do sacrifice, they have to do it on the, the Mount of Olives. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And what I had read that they had had a bridge went from the Mount of Olives to the Temple back Mount. Back in history. Back in history, so that the, explain why the priests couldn't touch the ground or, and they did it with uh, arches. arches. Right. Explain that a little bit. Okay, so it has to be very, very um, like uh, pure, all this process. Yeah. Because if you, like the whole idea of the, the process is to getting you cured from death. Yeah. And so the, the priest that does the process has also to be pure from death. And the cows have to be pure. So if you go through the Mount Olives where there are many, many graves, yes, you get immediately um, unpure. Yeah. So that's why they did all these arches and special bridge. But today the situation is much easier mm. because we could take a truck and put like something underneath, like, uh, you know, layers, and then you're fine. Oh, so, uh, okay. So all this is today is actually much, much easier, much easier to, to do that. Yes. Wow. In these conversations, we continue to hear about a state of peace that is needed before the sacrifice can take place. And but people understand that something like is happening here because all the all those years uh, we don't have red heifers here. Yeah. And now the fact that we have them here means that something is like processing. Yeah. But still, we we're going to need some time to make it like, you know, uh, the profit, the process to be sure. uh, the, the right time. My belief is that, you know, because the temple is the house of blessing to all nations. So I believe that one day the Muslims will also realize that it brings them blessing too. And they will want to be part of this. Uh, yeah. For that, we need a lot of prayers. Yeah, it's a lot. We'll look at what's actually happening in that region right now that shows what the Bible prophesied would happen is actually starting to come to pass. Hamas leaders did come out and say that one reason for the October 7th attack is because the red heifers were brought to Israel. They view this as a sign for a holy war where they may lose the Temple Mount. This state of unrest and need for the seven year peace treaty is exactly what is mentioned in the book of Daniel and we're starting to see both stages of this peace and unrest begin to be in motion. The Temple Mount could be a home for all peoples. Peace talks are not new to the parties who would be wise to leverage the current talks to create an opportunity for something completely new and bold and decisively address the underlying issues of the Temple Mount. Peace could be brokered by representatives of each religion or subgroup wishing to participate in a groundbreaking initiative, along with national and political leaders. These representatives would of course have to brainstorm together how to achieve true peace and understanding for all religions, cultures, and peoples, and then create a place of joint worship on the Temple Mount. This place should be open to all who are interested in free and safe access and the right to worship peacefully together. There is no religious barrier that prevents Jews and Muslims from sharing a place of prayer on the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount, a true sign of peace. MBS out of Saudi Arabia has even said, no, nah, the, the, the Temple Mount belongs to the Jews. It, it, there, there is no reference in the Quran or the Hadith to Jerusalem at all. And so we were kind of shocked to hear that wow. coming out of Saudi Arabia, especially MBS, wow. uh, the prince. The designation of Jerusalem as a holy site for the Muslims was a political act. One of the dynasties needed a holy site in this area and didn't want to go to Mecca and Medina. And they are the ones who actually translated or, or interpreted Surah 17 into saying that when Muhammad went to the furthest mosque, that was in Jerusalem. Uh, so it was a political act that political designated act. Jerusalem as a holy site to the Muslims. What MBS is doing is a political act of de-designating yeah. Jerusalem de -designating. As, a, yeah. as, as a holy site. And if he manages or succeeds in that, then the whole situation in the Middle East is going to change. Absolutely. Interesting. The Saudi prince has made a lot of comments and initiatives that are completely counter to what we're used to from the Islamic narrative. Saudis seek to reboot Temple Mount status quo with peace deal. 
looking to create peace at the Temple Mount, as well as offering Jerusalem more to the Jews than for its importance or supposed importance in Islam is massive changes that we're not used to seeing. It seems like it's prophetically fitting into the picture very well. As the process for the red heifers to be sacrificed is moving along, the process for the third temple to be rebuilt is moving along as well. Here's an Israeli politician carving stones that will be used to build the third temple. This, along with all the artifacts for the third temple that are already prepared by the Temple Institute, it's clear to see this prophecy of a third temple, which the ashes of these red heifers will purify, where the abomination of desolation will take place, is in the early stages of being fulfilled. I'll have more on this topic on the third temple update, covering it in my next video. These qualifying red heifers are extremely rare, and the fact that they have some right now makes some people question whether they should just do this ceremony in secret and just sacrifice one, something that they may possibly do. Which means it makes sense after we've been looking for these for thousands of years and we're, I mean, they're here and theoretically, you know, something could happen. It makes sense to it's at amazing. least have one sacrifice and have that material prepared in case something happens. And not even tell anybody. <laughs> Do you, do you understand my question? Definitely. It definitely makes sense. If it's going to happen, I don't know. It's a very sensitive subject. At the current state, the red heifers are there. They're of age. They meet all the qualifications to be used in the ritual ceremony. But it seems the people who are in control of these heifers are waiting for a state of peace before this ceremony takes place. This again fits perfectly in with what the Bible prophesies will happen. Unrest, peace, then we'll get the sacrifice, the third temple built, then the tribulation, the Antichrist, who will eventually stand in that temple and declare to be God, the abomination of desolation. Looking at Bible prophecy, it's clear to see we're moving exactly on the biblical prophetic timeline. Jesus Christ is the perfect sacrifice. All of this has to take place before he comes. It's Bible prophecy. It will be fulfilled, but Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. He's the Lamb of God, the Son of God, and we can go to him to be in perfect unity with God. This ritualistic stuff we don't have to do, but it's prophetic and it will have to take place before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, returns. The timeline may be longer or shorter than we think. Either way, these prophetic events will come to pass. It's a, it's a sign. It's it just happening, you know? Yeah. It sounds like something you just need to, need to open your eyes and to say, all the prophecies of the Bible just happening in front of, of our eyes. And to say, I'm, I'm so grateful to be alive in this generation. I don't know what's going to be next, <laughs> but thank you for, for, for showing me this place. And I'm praying that this will be soon, will be a blessing to the entire world. Beginning of some better times ahead. Amen.